I, um, I'd like to thank you for asking me to speak really because I'm really pleased that you've got a volunteer contributing today so I think that's great, good practice. Um, my name's Helen Johnston and I'm a volunteer with the Thames Discovery Programme. Um, I actually graduated with an archaeology degree from the University here in York um, and since then I have worked for the National Trust and also for the Heritage Lottery Fund where I worked on um, producing advice uh, and guidance on involving young people um, and improving youth participation in heritage lottery projects. However, most recently I've worked in volunteer management for various national health and disability charities. I work for Parkinson's UK at the moment. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the Thames Discovery Programme is a community archaeology project um, and we monitor the foreshore um, on the tidal Thames in London. Um, the project's got several, I always get this wrong, so bear with me, foreshore recording and observation groups, which we shorten to frogs, um, who monitor key sites um, within the different boroughs in London, and I coordinate the Greenwich frogs. Um, we, have, um, we regularly monitor several key sites in Greenwich as a group, um, and we've got about 20 members in our group. Um, and um, there's a site in Charlton, which is a ship's breaking yard, um, but our main site is a... Um, is Greenwich Palace, which is now in front of what is the old Royal Naval College. So, this is us recording in front of the old Royal Naval College. Um, it's currently where most of our focus is. Um, here there's some remains of jetties and, and river walls related to the Tudor Palace. Um, and there's also later features um, elsewhere on the foreshore um, relating to the Siemens Hospital and also um, industrial remains from boat building and wharfs that are in the area. Um, our site borders the World Heritage Site and in part of the foreshore in this area is a designated schedule at Ancient Monument. Um, as the coordinator of the Greenwich Group, I've tried to run it in a collaborative fashion, giving everyone the chance to participate. So that's what I really wanted to talk about today was about, I think there's been a lot of talk about um, volunteers not wanting to do certain parts of the project, not wanting to get involved in certain things or interested in other things. Um, I've, from the beginning, tried to run the project in a way so that everyone's got a chance to participate fully in what we do. Um, partly this is because this is how I work with volunteers professionally. Um, the kinds of charities I've worked for, um, it's a really important aspect of our work. Uh, there's been a long and sustained pressure on charities to make sure that they involve their beneficiaries in the decision making. Um, and most charities, um, especially health and disability ones, are rightly on board with this. Um, and this filters down within our organisations to all aspects of our work. So our volunteers are actively involved in planning and developing the volunteer programmes that they get involved with. Um, yesterday I was at our we have two volunteer forums a year. All our volunteers come along and they feed into what future work we're going to be doing. Um, just wanted to talk about some of the things that we've worked on as a group, um, just to show how we work. Um, we had to apply for scheduled monument consent to do the work on the foreshore. The, the red dot at the top is the bit that's a scheduled ancient monument. Um, up until the, and this um, came in after we had started work as a group, and so we had to apply for it. Um, up until that point, we've been working quite informally, um, but with having to apply for consent, this meant we had to create more of a structure for what we do and also commit to it. But up until then, we hadn't got any kind of terms of reference or anything about what we do. Um, so one of the things um, that came out of us getting consent was that um, her Historic England have asked us to provide an annual report on what we do. Again, that's much more than what we were ever doing before. Um, we were really keen that this information that we were producing every year was shared more widely. It wasn't just an email off to somebody within Historic England and got lost. Um, so we um, organised last year a showcase event um, in one of our local pubs, we invited anyone who's interested from the local community to come along and various volunteers from the group, this is me but there was about four of us speaking, um, from the group shared our recent research and we also um, shared the report that we wrote to Historic England on um, the 10th Discovery webpage and on social media and things like that. Um, so how do we as a group work? Um, we don't have any kind of formal structure for decision making, there's no committee, we don't have any kind of terms of reference. I wouldn't go so far as to say we do full co-production or participatory research or anything, um, but we do it fairly informally and, and probably in ways you're really familiar with. We, 
we, we have lots and lots of conversations on the foreshore, over coffee, in the pub. Um, I've always made it clear to the group that I want their ideas and I want their opinions, um, and it's not my group, it's their group. Um, and I also, when I'm talking to them and asking questions, I'm trying to get them to always focus on solutions and outcomes. Um, I have also provided more formal opportunities for participation, particularly when we were applying for scheduled monument consent, and with that we also put together a method statement um, so I put together some structured questions around what we do and how we want to do it and I uh, organised some meetings with other volunteers where they could come along and we went through the, the questions in a, a facilitated way. Um, we also put those online, we've got an online discussion board so I shared them online and encouraged anyone who's done um, frog training to contribute as well. So I always try and make sure there's lots of different ways people can contribute and, and share their ideas depending on what they're comfortable with. Um, we use quite a lot of online collaboration tools as well, like um, Google Docs and Dropbox, um, especially for writing reports and planning events and things like that. Again, anyone can contribute to and read them, feedback on them as well. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits and challenges of working in this way for us as a group. Um, I didn't want this just to be my thoughts. So when I was asked to do this talk, I, I put together a quick feedback questionnaire and sent it around anyone who's done frog training um, or who's come down to Greenwich and just got their ideas and, and thoughts as well. Um, so, benefits. A uh, big one for us, and this is something that everyone who, who responded pretty much pulled out, is that we can draw on a wide range of expertise, both from within archaeology and without archaeology. Um, it brings in not only other ideas and ways of working and approaching problems, but it's also really motivating for people to have their skills and experience valued in this way. Um, and it's also something that people raise this a lot as well. It's a, a way to learn from each other um, and learn new things. And I've certainly learned a lot from the other volunteers who've been involved. Um, like I mentioned, this really increases the motivation of everyone that's involved. Um, We've got the flexibility to shape the project to what we're interested in and the skills of the people that we've got involved and also the amount that they want to contribute. Um, CDP is a really flexible volunteering pro project. Um, you can come along when you've got the time, which is really useful for a lot of people with a lot of other pressures in modern life. Um, but there's also space for you to develop your own interests and I've really enjoyed as the coordinator watching people in the group take, find their interests and, and really run with those and, and see what they can do. Um, and that creates a real sense of ownership in what we do. I feel that what we do is quite um, representative because we work collaboratively. This isn't one person's idea or one person's opinions. Um, I think that gives us a bit of robustness to what we do. Um, and we also mean we're quite open to ideas for externally. We, we're on social media a lot and we're always asking people to give them our, their ideas about what's going on. Um, for me personally, it's quite a benefit because I don't need to be an expert in foreshore archaeology to coordinate the group. I'm surrounded by people who've got that knowledge and skills and experience that I can draw on, both paid and unpaid. And um, for me, that's really great because I don't think I would have done this otherwise. Um, but I do need to be a really good facilitator to pull in all of that together. Okay, so some of the challenges. It can be really slow. Um, I'll be honest, we're all volunteers, that obviously takes up time, but there's lots and lots of backwards and forwards. Um, just writing some of our reports took several months, and sometimes that's just my fault, life got in the way, but sometimes it's just because you've got lots of different people who want to contribute and you've got to have those neg negotiations and discussions around that. Um, it takes work to facilitate. You have to keep asking questions. Um, and accept that the way you're approaching things might not work and you need to go back and try other approaches and things like that. And the group is learning. When I first started, I tried this and I wouldn't get much response or maybe one or two people would feedback. But um, I've built on those small amounts of input that I've got um, and, and recognised that. And, and people have seen that you, know, you can give a little bit of input and something will come of that. Um, so they've seen the benefits of contributing. Um, but there is a real issue with confidence, um, even though we've been established now for a while, um, there's still a real tendency to defer to professionals. Um, I've really stopped people getting away with that now. I tend to say, well, what do we think? Well, we've got our ideas, then I will email the team and then see what they say. But, you know, there's still a tendency to go, oh, but what does, what does, what does Elliot say? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's not here, we're here. Um, 
the, this way of working can be quite cliquey and can lead to groupthink. Um, as a professional, I'm really conscious of trying to make sure that that doesn't happen, but it is always a fear of mine. Um, and that was something as well that came up in the feedback a little bit. Um, the group needs to be very reflective and continue to be open to new people and new ideas for this to be really successful. Um, and yeah, good facilitation is really key. Um, and it's the role of the facilitator to be asking, is everyone contributing? And if people aren't contributing, what's stopping them from contributing? Um, conflicts, managing conflict can be an issue. Um, like I say, we don't really have any kind of, we haven't formalised any of this as a group, so we don't have any real process for managing disagreements. Fortunately, we haven't had any real ones, um, I hope. Um, but although I suspect that there may have been people who've drifted off because they haven't liked the direction the group's gone in. Um, and they haven't had a way of really addressing that. Um, it's inevitable that there will be times when people, not everyone agrees with the direction the group's going in. Um, and again, it's really good to have a facilitator in place to help manage that, but also that the group's got an understanding of what happens in those situations, so it's the group responsibility to deal with it. Um, and it's why I wouldn't go so far as to say that as a group we do, we do co-production because um, we've not really agreed how we are going to work as a group. I've imposed this on top down on them. Um, finally, we've not really produced much in terms of outputs. I did that survey that Dan was talking about and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we haven't really done much of that. And we've got lots of blog posts, we've done TDP conference papers, we've run our own events. Um, we are getting there. there, there are articles on the horizon, I could see them happening, um, but it's taken a long time to get there. Um, so finally, I, I just wanted to say really, I think as a group, um, we do more and better knowledge creation, as like it was in the, the title of this section, um, because we can contribute to all aspects of the project, um, and we, have, we are confident about contributing. That came out really clearly in the, the feedback that I got from people, and that as a group we know that our contributions make an impact, which I think is really important, but it can be really hard work. So that's it. <laughs>